If you received one of the COVID-19 vaccines earlier this year, you're probably wondering if it's time for you to go get a booster shot. It's a good question. You see, we are hearing about vaccine effectiveness going down, antibody levels going down. And with this uh, Delta variant being the dominant variant circulating in the community, it's an important question. Many parts of our country still have very high rates of transmission, especially where I live, uh, our rates of transmission are still high. So it's a, it's a matter of concern for all of us because we are wondering if the level of protection we got after receiving the vaccine is still sufficient for us. Hello everyone, I'm Naveen Agarwal and I want to welcome all of you to this weekly video update. Now recently the FDA authorized for emergency use a third booster dose of the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine. This is an mRNA vaccine and this is the only vaccine which is fully approved by the FDA. The other two, one from Moderna and another one from J&J, these are different vaccines, are still under an EUA, which is emergency use authorization. But I fully expect a similar booster dose announcement or authorization to come for those vaccines as well in the near future. But right now it is only for those who receive the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine. So we will look into the data that the FDA showed to the Vaccine Advisory Committee when this decision took place. Uh, we look at who is involved, who is included in the scope of authorization and from CDC guidance, who is eligible. There's a lot of confusion around that. But share with me in comments below your experience, your perspective. Are you considering a booster shot for you and your family? Are you like me frustrated that you cannot get this booster shot? I got the Moderna vaccine, so this is not, I'm not eligible for this. And even if I had the Pfizer vaccine, I would not be eligible. And this, this is creating a little bit of uh, frustration, at least on my part. So I want to hear from you how you are feeling about this whole topic. And what are your questions? We'll look into that in future videos. Okay, so let's jump right into it. First, we will look at the data that the FDA presented and very high level. So they looked at the booster dose immunogenicity assessment, meaning the response of the immune system in response to the booster shot. I will give you a link to the full data set as part of this video. So they are looking at data comparing results one month after booster versus one month after dose two in the same individual. So this is important to realize. That's why the data set is small, but it is a very meaningful direct comparison. And if you recall, the two doses were about 21 days apart. And after six months, they gave a booster shot. The data set is about 300 people in the study, but the actual data is actually from only 200 people. So pre-dose one, they have a number. One month after pre-dose two, that's another number. And they are comparing that number to one month post-booster. And booster took place about six months later. Now, this is a very special type of a test. This is not the commercially available serology test. This is what they call a plaque assay, and it measures the number of neutralizing antibodies. Those neutralizing antibodies are the ones that prevent the virus from replicating itself, from entering from one cell to another. They actually directly measure that. It's a very sophisticated test, and in one of our future videos, we will talk about that test. So it's not one of those commercially available tests that compares, you know, I got 100 here or 200 there. What does it mean? I've been asked that those questions many times. But this is a very different test. Again, the source will be provided to you. Link will be provided to you in the video uh, as a link below. So let's look at, the, look at the data. Now, notice that these are this is a log scale. So the length of the height of these bars or the length of these bars may not make uh, that much of a sense for now. But let me explain this to you. Notice that they are measuring neutralizing antibody titers, geometric mean titers, and it's basically a number, to the US WA1 2020 strain. This is the original strain of the coronavirus that was found in the Washington area early 2020. They are measuring sort of effectiveness of this vaccine booster against this strain. So pre-vaccination, pre-dose one, Number is around 10, very low number. It goes up to about 760. Great. But look what happens just prior to the booster dose. It has come down to 136. And now this height difference may not appear too much, but it's a log scale. It's a very big difference. 
and after the booster is given one month after the booster it goes back to close to 2400 so compared to this number this number is more than three times it's a pretty significant change that's the reason to get the booster shot we know that the new number will come down of neutralizing antibodies that means the effectiveness of this vaccine will go down over time but if we get the booster shot the effective effectiveness will go way back up that's the reason to get the get the booster shot okay there is a lot more data and they have shown some very early data about against the delta variant as well i'm not presenting it here you can find it in the data package and again the story is good that even against the delta variant a third booster actually kind of boosts up your immune system against the delta variant so that news is very good once more data comes out i will be presenting that to you in another video okay so next i'm going to talk about who FDA has included in the scope of this authorization because that will help you understand your eligibility. So FDA is covering people 65 years of age or older. Anybody 65 or older is covered. Or 18 to 64 years old at high risk of severe COVID. Underlying health conditions, their living situation, their, their environment. And 18 to 65 years old who are at high risk due to exposure in their jobs. That's a very broad category that FDA has uh, authorized this booster shot for. But to emphasize, it is not available to people who, like me who got the Moderna vaccine or somebody who got the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Hopefully in the near future, that option will become available. So how do you know? If you got the Pfizer vaccine, you might be eligible, right? If you're 65 years or older, very straightforward. You are eligible. You should definitely talk to your doctor and go get this booster shot, especially if you have underlying health conditions. Now, if you are in the 18 to 65, 4 years old range, that question is not very easy to answer. And in the near term, CDC has provided some guidance to help make those decisions. Now, we will go into that in the next slide to show what that guidance is. And keep in mind, that guidance is subject to change. This is where I was uh, going to share my frustration with you because why limit? There is no shortage of supply, but there might be other considerations in their mind so that they have provided this, these limitations and this guidance. But again, share in your comments below how you are feeling about this and what, it, what should be done, what should be the right approach about this. What are your concerns and questions? Okay, so let's look into the CDC guidance next. From a CDC's perspective, here's the guidance. Again, 65 years of age or older included automatically. Age 18 plus who live in long-term care settings. Now they define that on their web page. You can go to this web page and again, I'll give you this, this link as well as part of this video. Age 18 plus with underlying medical conditions. There's a long list of medical conditions that they have included. 18 plus who work in high risk settings and 18 plus who live in high risk settings. So it's consistent with FDA's uh, scope, but they have defined a little bit more about who, who might be eligible. So you have to look at your scenario, look at your condition carefully, talk to your doctor and ask them these questions, whether you might be eligible or not. This is a fully approved vaccine. So even if you don't qualify, according to this, I think there's no reason why you should be refused if your doctor believes you should be able to get that vaccine. So this is general guidance for the public. I would strongly recommend that you have a conversation with your doctor if you are concerned. One of my concerns is if you live in a high transmission rate area where the rates of infection are still very high, if you live in those areas, that could be a high risk setting. But again, talk to your doctor and see if you might qualify. So we talked about those three things, like data is very clear. Sure, small data set is very clear. From a safety point of view, there are no new, new, new concerns. It's similar to before. In fact, compared to the second dose, what people felt after the second dose, symptoms like redness, swelling, pain, some you know, low-grade fever or some systemic issues, there were some serious events reported, yes, but after the booster shot, it is no different, no worse. In fact, it's slightly better, I believe. So safety is not an issue. Effectiveness is clearly shown by this data that 
one uh, one month after dose two you compare that number to one month after the booster shot that jump is significant so this is very clear indication that it will help all of us to maintain our level of protection against this coronavirus now on the preliminary level they have shown data against delta variant as well in that data package that data is there and it is showing effectiveness against delta variant as well cdc guidance fda guidance will tell you who is eligible and if you want to read more about that you can follow those links so once again let me know what is on your mind uh, hopefully soon i'm praying that a booster shot will be available for those who receive the moderna vaccine and the jnj vaccine but for now you cannot mix and match and i know in many parts of the world many countries are allowing this fda is not allowing that so let me know in your comment below should fda allow people who receive the moderna mrna to get a booster shot from the pfizer mrna after the, these are mrna vaccines what difference does it make let me know if you feel that way and we will see what the public opinion is i believe fda is considering that question but again they will take their time for good reason they'll take their time to look at the data and then come out with a guidance i want to thank you for your uh, interest and continued support for my channel we have grown tremendously and we have uh, been receiving a lot of questions lot of comments lot of engagement from viewers like you please continue to do that please continue to share your comments below let me know what's on your mind what questions you have and i will look into that make another video in the future i look forward to hearing from you and i hope all of you are continuing to stay safe in still very difficult circumstances.